Good morning, students. I hope you are hail and hearty by the grace of God. Welcome to the online classes. Myself, Elizabeth Daniel, will be teaching you biology. Before I start teaching, I want to introduce you to your textbook. This year, the textbook is changed and we will be using the book that I am showing you. It is ICSC Biology 7 based on the latest CISC curriculum, Viva Education and the authors of the book are Professor S.S. Hassan and Dr. Renu Nath. The content of the book is compiled under five headings or five chapters. The first chapter deals with tissue Second chapter deals with kingdom classification. Third chapter deals with plant life. Fourth chapter deals with human body. And the fifth chapter deals with health and hygiene. Students are requested to note down the definitions and important points as the video may not be available after a few days. You have learnt in class 6 that all living beings, whether plant or animals, are made up of cells. We very well know that the cell is the structural and functional unit of all living beings. To study the tissues, it is very important to recall the structure of a cell. Seeing these figures, I hope you are able to identify them as plant and animal cells. Here, figure A is an animal cell and figure B is a plant cell. You can very well identify them on the basis of their shape and on the basis of their size. Also, you can identify them on the basis of the outer covering of the cells. A plant cell has a two-layered covering. The outermost is the cell wall, but the animal cell does not contain a cell wall. An animal cell contains only a cell membrane. In single-celled organisms, all the life processes such as nutrition, respiration, excretion and reproduction are performed by a single cell. As you can see in the figure that is displayed here, I have taken an example of a unicellular organism called amoeba. Here, you can see that the nutrition, reproduction and respiration, all these three life processes are taking place within one cell, that is the animal's body or you can either say the single cell. Here in the first figure you can see that the nutrition is taking place with the help of the pseudopodia which are sent out by the animal body. In the second figure you can see that the parent cell that is the amoeba itself divides into two and gives birth to two new amoebae or two daughter cells. In the third figure you can see that Gaseous exchange or we can say respiration takes place through the cell membrane of amoeba. Here you can see that the arrow shows the oxygen is taken in through the cell membrane and carbon dioxide is given out. What about multicellular organisms like human beings, animals and plants? In multicellular organisms, cells are specialized to carry out different functions. 
as you can see in this figure there are different cells of human beings the first figure shows the types of cells that is the nerve cell another one showing muscle cell the bone cell then the reproductive cells the gland cells the rbcs etc etc and where are all these cells found in the human body the second figure shows you that that the connective tissues are present inside the bodies and the gaps between the different organs of the bodies similarly the muscle cells are present in the skeletal muscles the epithelial cells form the outer covering or the skin of the body the nerve cell form the nerves tissue or you can say they connect the brain to the sense organs the next figure shows you the cardiac muscles the cardiac muscles or the cardiac muscle cells form the tissues of the heart the smooth muscles as you had seen in the previous figure they form the muscles of the stomach the intestines etc the third figure shows you different types of organ systems present in the human body for example skeletal system muscle system digestive system respiratory system nervous system circulatory system skeletal system provides structure to the body and protects internal organs muscular system supports the body and allows it to move similarly digestive system breaks down food and absorbs its nutrients respiratory system takes in oxygen example of plants we can see here that the cells of the leaf they absorb the sunlight and they prepare the food for the plant in this process water is sucked in by the cells of the root and transported to the leaves example of a plant we see that the leaves of the plant absorb the energy in in sunlight and take in carbon dioxide from the air water from the soil is transported by the cells of the root and they are transported to the leaves leaves prepare the food for the plant and give out oxygen into the atmosphere in multicellular organisms cells are specialized to carry out different functions and organized into organs and systems which collectively form an organism let us get an idea of organization of cells we know that the life starts with a basic unit called a cell so the cell is called as the basic structural and functional unit of all living beings which is capable of performing all other life processes the cells that perform same type of function 
look alike and work together. Together they form tissue and present tissue level of organization. This marks the beginning of division of labor. Different tissues that work together and perform one specialized function form an organ. Brain, kidney, stomach, intestine, lungs and heart in animals and roots, stem, leaf and flower in plants represent organ level of organization. Many organs work together to perform one major life function. They form an organ system. For example, mouth, food pipe, stomach, intestine and rectum form the digestive system. Similarly, heart and blood vessels form the circulatory system. These organ systems represent organ system level of organization. Like our body, plants also have organ systems. You can identify two organ systems in plants, the shoot system and the root system. The shoot system is formed of stem, its branches, leaves, flowers and fruits. The root system has a main root, its branches and the root hairs. In an organism, all the systems work together in a coordinated manner. Thus, each multicellular organism has a well-organized structure consisting of organ systems, organs, tissues and cells. Thus, the cell is the smallest complete living unit of an organism. Students, you may now note down the definitions which I am going to revise with you. A cell. A cell is the structural and functional unit of a living being. Tissue. A group of cells having similar structure and function form a tissue. Organization. It is the manner in which smaller units of any structure or system are arranged into larger units in an hierarchical fashion. Plants are composed of four major organ groups that is roots, stem and branches, leaves and flowers. These organs are made up of different tissues which work together to perform a common function. This figure gives you a better idea of the different plant organs that is the root, stem and leaf. All three of them have got different plant tissues. We will now study the various types of plant tissues and their location and purpose within a plant. Based on whether their cells can divide or not, plant tissues are basically of two kinds, meristematic tissue and permanent. You are very well aware that a seed grows into a small plant which then grows into a big tree. But have you ever thought how does growth take place in a plant? Plant cells divide repeatedly resulting an increase in their number. This results in growth in height as well as width of the plant. 
Meristems or meristematic tissues are formed of actively dividing young cells. They keep adding new cells throughout the life of a plant. This is the reason that the plant does not stop to grow throughout its life. Thus, meristematic tissue is responsible to give rise to all new organs like buds, flowers, leaves and branches. This tissue is found in the growing regions of plants such as tips of roots, stems and branches. Students, we shall now focus on the characteristics of the meristematic cells. Look at the picture given in pink color. It is a typical meristematic tissue. Observing this picture, you can clearly get an idea about its characteristics. Let us discuss them one by one. They are living and have thin walled cells. Vacuoles are either absent or are few in number and small in size. They contain dense protoplasm which is needed for cell division. As you can see in the picture, the nucleus is large, prominent and centrally located. Cells may be spherical, oval or cubical in shape. All the cells of the meristem are tightly packed with no intercellular spaces. That means that there is no space or gap between the two cells. They do not store reserve food materials. Meristematic tissue is further divided into three types. These three types are divided on the basis of the position where they are found. These three types are epical meristem, intercalary meristem and lateral meristem. We will first start learning about the epical meristem. Epical meristem, as the name suggests, the epical meristem is found at the apex or the tips of the shoot and the root. Epical meristem helps in the elongation of the stem and the elongation of root. Students, I have just now told you that the epical meristematic tissue is found at the tip of the root and at the tip of the shoot. This I am going to show you with an experiment. This is a seed. It is a lentil seed. I soaked it just 4-5 days ago and in this first seed you can see that the root is not emerging out. In the second seed you can see that the root is just starting to emerge out. In the third seed it is still trying to come out of the cotyledons. In the fourth seed it is it has emerged out of the cotyledons and in the last four seeds you can see the elongation of the root. This elongation of the root is possible due to the apical meristematic tissues which are found at the tip, at the tip, this is the tip of the root, at the tip of the root due to which when the cells the meristematic cells of the tip divide and redivide that occurs an increase in the number of cells and hence the root elongates now discuss about the intercalary meristem this meristem is present at the base of leaves nodes and internodes 
Nodes are the swollen places on the stem from where the leaf or a branch arises. And internode is the region in between the two nodes. Look at picture number one. Here the nodes are marked as green on the stem. The leaf bases are also marked as green. But the internode is marked as white on the stem. The next picture shows the nodes and internodes with the help of arrows. I think by now you have understood the place of intercalary meristem. Cell division occurs for a longer period of time in the region of internodes. This region is responsible for the longitudinal growth of the stem or you can say the stem elongation. Now let's see where the lateral meristem is found. It is found both in stems as well as in roots. This tissue is found along the lateral sides of the stems and roots. This means that lateral meristem is present between water conducting and food conducting tissues. By water conducting tissue I mean xylem tissue and food conducting tissue means phloem tissue. Can you guess what is the function of this tissue? This tissue gives the plant its width or girth or in other words it is responsible for the increase in the circumference or the thickness of the stem. Let's do the recap of different types of meristematic tissues. There are three types of meristematic tissues. Epical meristem, lateral meristem and intercalary meristem. As the name suggests, epical meristem is found at the apex of stem and roots, that is, at the growing tips of stem and roots. Lateral meristem is found at the lateral sides of stem and root. Intercalary meristem is found at the base of leaves, nodes and internodes. Now coming to the functions. The function of epical meristem is growth and elongation of stem and root. Lateral meristem functions to increase the diameter or the width of the stem and roots. Whereas intercalary meristem increases the length of plant. This is all about the meristematic tissue. Most of the cells formed by the meristematic tissue ultimately become mature and lose the ability to divide further. Cells that have stopped dividing and have assumed or taken up a permanent shape and size make up permanent tissue. They differentiate into various types of cells to perform specific functions like the epidermal cells, like the parenchymal cells, sclerenchyma, xylem, etc, etc. We will now study the characteristics of permanent tissue. Permanent cells are incapable of division. That means they cannot divide further. The cells may be living or dead as later on some of the permanent cells which are living they become dead. The cells may be thin walled or thick walled that means the cell wall of the cell may be thin or may be thick and there is a large vacuole in the center of the cell. The nucleus is displaced to one side. Let us now have a recap of the characteristics of permanent tissues. Let us first discuss the shape and size. Cells 
have definite shape and size which do not alter afterwards. This means that the shape and size which the cells have acquired will not change afterwards. Now about the specific functions. Permanent cells come to have specific functions. That means different cells have different functions to perform. About the cell wall. The cell wall may be thin or thick and the thickenings can be regular or irregular. Cell division. Normally the permanent cells do not divide. They may be living or dead cells. Students do remember that permanent tissues are found in all parts of a plant except the meristems. Depending upon the type of cells that form the permanent tissues, they are classified as simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue. The simple permanent tissue is made up of only one type of cells. Based on their function, they form protective tissue and supporting tissue. The protective tissue is also called as the dermal tissue. The word dermal is taken from a Greek word derma which means skin. As the skin forms an outer protective covering in animal body, so does the dermal tissue forms an outer protective covering of the plant. The dermal tissue begins as parenchyma cells which are then modified to form various types of cells that protect the plant from physical damage and desiccation that means drying up. In a typical plant the dermal tissue is made of one layer with their cells closely packed together to produce a secure boundary known as epidermis. Protective tissue are of two types, epidermis and cork. Epidermis forms a covering over the surface of leaves and living cells of roots and stems. Epidermis of leaves secretes a waxy and waterproof layer called cuticle that helps the plant to retain water and prevent it from drying out. The figure displayed here are first of epidermis and second one is of cork. The first figure is the transverse section of a leaf which clearly shows that there is a single layer of epidermis on the upper layer and there is a single layer of epidermis on the lower surface of the leaf. The second figure shows you the position of cork in a dicot stem. Cork cells are old and are found only in old and woody dicot stems. Now I'll explain the structure of epidermis with the help of a transverse section of leaf. Epidermal cells are the outermost layer of the primary plant body which covers roots, stems, leaves, floral parts, fruits and seeds. The arrow in the picture shows the position of upper epidermis in the leaf. Similarly, there is a single layer of epidermal cells on the lower surface of the leaf called as the lower epidermis. The lower epidermis is interrupted because of the presence of stomatal cells. The epidermal cells are made up of unspecialized cells like parenchyma and sclerenchyma. Epidermal cells are also the site of photosynthesis and gaseous exchange. So up till now we have studied that plant tissues are of two types, meristematic tissue and permanent tissue. 
Meristematic tissue have three types, apical meristem, intercalary meristem and lateral meristem. Then the permanent tissue, the permanent tissue again are of three types. They are protective tissue, supporting tissue and conducting tissue. In which we have studied that the protective tissue are of two types, epidermis and cork. Let us now study in detail about supporting tissue. These tissues are made up of only one type of cells. Their functions are synthesis of food, storage of food and to provide support and strength to the plants. These tissues can be further grouped into three types. Parenchyma tissue, colenchyma tissue, sclerenchyma tissue. Now we'll deal with the parenchyma tissue. Parenchyma cells make up parenchyma tissue. It is the most common and simplest tissue that forms the major parts of the higher plants. Look at the pictures displayed here. The first picture is an enlarged view of the cells and the second picture shows how the cells appear when observed under microscope. Parenchyma cells are living. They have intercellular spaces between them. These spaces help in the exchange of gases in the cells of the plant. Intercellular spaces can be very clearly seen in the picture. Observe the structure of the cells in the picture. The cells may be oval, round or polygonal in shape. Parenchyma tissue is made up of thin walled cells. The cells have a small nucleus, large vacuole and dense cytoplasm. Observe the picture displayed here. Inside the cell, the darker green portion shows the cytoplasm and the central light green portion shows the position of a large vacuole. They are frequently found in all roots, stems, leaves and fruits. Some parenchyma cells have many chloroplasts. Example, the tissues found in leaves. This type of tissue is called chlorenchyma. Chlorenchyma. Their main function is to prepare food for the plant. That is, to perform photosynthesis. In hydrophytes, that means the plants that grow in water, the parenchyma tissue has large intercellular spaces which are filled with air to provide buoyancy. Buoyancy means to help them to float in water. Such cells are termed as erenchyma. Let us now discuss the role of parenchyma tissue in plants. It provides support to plant and maintains its shape. It fills the spaces between other tissues and serves as a packing material. It fills the spaces between other tissues and serve as a packing material. Cells which contain chlorophyll help in photosynthesis. In some plants, these tissues store food and water in leaves, stems, seeds, and fruits. Cholenchyma is also a supporting tissue. It is made up of cholenchyma cells. The word cholenchyma is taken from a Greek word kola, which means glue. So we can see that the cholenchyma cells are closely packed to each other or glued to each other to provide support to the plant. The cells are alive during the cell maturity. Cells are elongated. As you can see in the diagram given here, they have a thicker and more uneven walls than the parenchyma cells. In transverse section or horizontal section, the cells look like circular, oval or polygonal in shape. Observe the picture displayed here. The first picture clearly shows that the shape of the cells are polygonal in transverse section. They are elongated 
as seen in longitudinal section of the stem. Look at the second picture displayed here, which is the longitudinal section of the stem. Here, the cells appear to be elongated in shape. The pictures displayed here show that the cell wall are thickened at the corners. This thickening is due to the deposition of cellulose and pectin, which is another complex carbohydrate. The intercellular spaces are absent between the cells because of the thickenings present over the cell wall. I'll repeat the main features of the structure of cholenchyma tissue for you. The cells appear to be polygonal in transverse section and elongated in longitudinal section. The end of cell wall may be tapered. That means they are narrowing at the ends. The cells are closely packed together with very small or no intercellular spaces. As I've already told you that the intercellular spaces are filled with cellulose and pectin. The cell walls are unevenly thickened with the deposition of cellulose and pectin and hemicellulose. The thickenings usually occur at corners of the cell walls as shown in the second figure. What are the functions of cholenchyma tissue? Well, they provide support for plants, allowing bending but not breaking. They provide mechanical support to new developed or growing organs, especially roots and stem. It also provides flexibility and allows easy bending of the stem and leaf stalks, that is petiole, and prevents their breakage. It allows the cells to expand and to be stretched as the young stem grows. The thickened edge of cholenchyma walls increase the strength of the tissue. A few cells of cholenchyma have chloroplasts and thus are able to prepare food or carry out photosynthesis. Some of the cells can store starch as food in them. The third type of supporting tissue is sclerenchyma. Sclerenchyma cells form sclerenchyma tissue. The word sclerenchyma is taken from a Greek word skleros meaning hard or rigid which means stiff or fixed or impossible to bend. That is why we see that the mature or older stems are impossible to bend. Thick, tough secondary cell wall normally impregnated with lignin. That means filled with a substance called lignin. This substance provides rigidity to the stem. Let's move on to the nature or structure of sclerenchyma tissue. The cells are long, narrow, thick and lignified, usually pointed at both ends, as you have seen in the previous slide. The cell wall is evenly thickened with lignin and sometimes is so thick that the cell cavity or lumen is absent. Nucleus is absent and hence the tissue is made up of dead cells. They have simple, often oblique pits in the walls. The middle lamella, that is the wall between adjacent cells is conspicuous, means quite visible. Now we learn about the functions of sclerenchyma. It is the most important tissue to provide mechanical strength and protection to the plant body. It provides strength, rigidity, flexibility and elasticity to the plant body. Sclerenchyma fibers are used in the manufacture of ropes, mats and certain flexible fibers.
Now this picture clearly shows the difference between the cells of the three kinds of supporting tissue that is parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. The figures displayed on top show how the tissues appear in the cross section or in the transverse section and the figures given below show that how the cells appear in a longitudinal section. The cells in the cross section appear to be oval or polygonal in shape whereas in longitudinal section they appear to be longitudinal. Let's revise the characteristics of parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma tissue on the basis of certain features of their cells. Let's discuss the nature of cells. Parenchyma cells are living and so are the colenchyma cells. But the sclerenchyma cells are dead cells. Will the cytoplasm be present in them? Yes, parenchyma cells have cytoplasm in them. Colenchyma also have cytoplasm in them. But sclerenchyma cells, they do not have cytoplasm in them. Nucleus is also absent in sclerenchyma cells. Cell wall of parenchyma cells is thin and made up of cellulose. But the cell wall of colenchyma cells is thick at corners and it is made up of cellulose and pectin. The cell wall of sclerenchyma is uniformly thickened by lignin. Intercellular space between the cells of parenchyma tissue is present. But intercellular space between the cells of colenchyma is absent because of the deposition of cellulose and pectin. The intercellular space between the cells of sclerenchyma is absent because of the deposition of lignin. The cells of parenchyma are found in almost every part of the plant. The cells of colenchyma are found in the flexible regions of plants below the epidermis of the stem, in the leaf stalks, in the midrib of a few leaves, etc. The cells of sclerenchyma are found in all plant parts. Stem, leaf, veins, hard coverings of the seeds, nuts like walnut, coconut, etc. Parenchyma tissue provides support and helps in storage of food. Colenchyma tissue provides support and flexibility to the plant parts. Sclerenchyma, it provides mechanical support to the plant parts. Now I conclude my session here. In the next session, we will be dealing about the complex plant tissues. As this session was not an interactive session, so I do not know what is your problem and what you have not understood. Your problems will be discussed when the school reopens. You are asked to write down the homework which will be uploaded on the school's website. So students, thank you for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. God bless you.